Imagine a world where humans were not the only dominant species. What if intelligence had not been the key to survival, but brute strength? Throughout history, evolution has shaped the fate of species, favoring different survival strategies. The story of human evolution is not a simple linear progression from ape-like ancestors to modern Homo sapiens. Instead, it is a tale of competition, adaptation, and even extinction. Some human relatives, like Homo heidelbergensis and Neanderthals, possessed physical strength far beyond that of modern humans. Meanwhile, Homo sapiens chose a different path, one of intelligence, problem-solving, and social cooperation. But what if we could reactivate the lost genes of our ancient ancestors? Could we one day bring back their superior strength and endurance? Stay tuned as we explore these fascinating questions. And don't forget to subscribe if you love unraveling the mysteries of our past. The path of evolution is not a straight line. It is a tangled web of different species, adapting to unique environments. While all primates share a common ancestor, their evolutionary journeys have taken vastly different directions. Gorillas, orangutans, and chimpanzees each followed their own paths, developing specialized traits suited to their habitats. However, hominins, the group that includes modern humans and their closest extinct relatives, embarked on a unique evolutionary course. Unlike other primates, hominins began walking upright, developing larger brains and using tools to manipulate their environment. Among the early hominins, Homo heidelbergensis and Homo rudolfensis stand out as species built for power and endurance. Homo heidelbergensis, often considered the common ancestor of both Neanderthals and modern humans, was robust with a thick skeleton and powerful limbs. This species thrived across Africa and Eurasia, hunting large animals and enduring extreme climates. Homo rudolfensis, though less well understood, also displayed a strong build and a skull structure, indicating a sizable brain. These early human relatives were physically formidable, but they were not the final step in evolution. Over time, different hominin species developed distinct survival strategies some relying on brute strength, others on adaptability and intelligence. Eventually, a new species emerged that would take a completely different approach to survival, Homo sapiens. The question is, was intelligence truly the best evolutionary path, or did we lose something along the way? While early hominins relied on sheer physical power, Homo sapiens took a different evolutionary route one that prioritized intelligence over brute strength. But was this truly the best survival strategy? Around 300,000 years ago, the first anatomically modern humans appeared in Africa. Unlike their Neanderthal and Homo heidelbergensis relatives, Homo sapiens had lighter bones, smaller muscle mass, and a more slender build. At first glance, they seemed weaker than their hominin cousins. However, they had one key advantage, a highly developed brain. Rather than relying on strength to hunt or defend themselves, Homo sapiens developed advanced tools, weapons, and strategies. They formed larger social groups, cooperated in hunting, and created complex communication systems. This ability to adapt and innovate gave them an edge over physically stronger species but intelligence does not always equal wisdom. While Homo sapiens as a species developed superior cognitive abilities, some individuals seem to contradict this evolutionary success. Take Donald Trump, for example, a man who reached the highest level of political power, yet is widely criticized for his questionable decision-making and lack of intellectual depth. If intelligence was supposed to be the defining trait of Homo sapiens, how do figures like him fit into our evolutionary story? Perhaps physical strength wasn't the only thing we lost in evolution. Maybe our intellectual advantage isn't as universal as we like to think. 
But while modern humans traded strength for intelligence, one group of ancient humans never lost their raw power, the Neanderthals. While Homo sapiens evolved to be lean, adaptable, and intelligent, Neanderthals remained powerhouses of raw strength and endurance. Living in harsh Ice Age environments across Europe and Asia, they developed thick bones, dense muscle mass, and unmatched resilience. But just how strong were they? Studies of Neanderthal skeletal remains suggest they had 10% more muscle mass than modern European men. Their upper bodies were particularly powerful, with broad shoulders and massive forearm muscles. Their grip strength was comparable to that of elite modern athletes, and they likely used this strength for hunting, toolmaking, and survival in extreme conditions. If a Neanderthal woman and a Cro-Magnon woman, early European Homo sapiens, were to fight, the Neanderthal would easily overpower her in terms of brute strength. However, the Cro-Magnon woman might have had an advantage in agility and endurance. While Neanderthals were built for short bursts of power, Homo sapiens evolved for long-distance running and persistence hunting. Surprisingly, Neanderthal women may have actively participated in hunting. Fossil evidence shows that their injuries were similar to those of male hunters, suggesting that in small Neanderthal groups, women were just as involved in dangerous hunting activities as men. This is in stark contrast to many early Homo sapien societies, where hunting was largely a male-dominated task. In many ways, Neanderthals represent a path not taken, a species that prioritized physical might over intellectual complexity. But their superior strength alone wasn't enough to ensure their survival. As Homo sapiens expanded across the globe, Neanderthals began to disappear. So, what made Homo sapiens the dominant species? And could we one day reactivate Neanderthal strength through genetics? The answer might lie in their unique biology. Neanderthals weren't just strong, they were biologically adapted for survival in harsh Ice Age climates. Their muscular build, thick bones, and large lung capacity suggest they were designed for endurance in extreme environments. But could modern genetic science unlock the secrets of their superior strength and resilience? One major difference between Neanderthals and modern humans is hormonal composition. Research suggests that Neanderthals may have had higher levels of testosterone, which contributed to their increased muscle mass, stronger bones, and even greater aggression. Their pelvises were wider, allowing for a lower center of gravity, which would have made them incredibly stable in physical confrontations, perhaps even making them skilled grapplers. Studies of fossilized Neanderthal and Denisovan females revealed just how large and powerful these women were. One of the largest female Neanderthal specimens, found near the French Riviera, weighed an estimated 75 kilograms, 165 pounds, heavier than the average modern human male. Another female, a Denisovan specimen, weighed an estimated 78.5 kilograms, 173 pounds, making her one of the largest hominin females ever recorded. These women were not fragile gatherers. They were warriors of the Ice Age. With modern advancements in genetic engineering, scientists are now exploring ways to reactivate ancient genes. Could we one day restore Neanderthal-like strength in modern humans? The ethical implications are vast, but the possibility is real. Yet, strength alone does not define a species. What about communication and intelligence? Could Neanderthals speak? And if so, what did they sound like? For decades, scientists debated whether Neanderthals could speak like modern humans. Some believed they lacked the vocal complexity of Homo sapiens, suggesting they relied on gestures or primitive sounds. But recent discoveries tell a different story. A small yet crucial bone in the throat, known as the hyoid bone, plays a key role in speech. Fossilized remains show that the Neanderthal hyoid was nearly identical to that of modern humans. 
This suggests they could produce a wide range of vocal sounds, just like us. Further evidence comes from their FOXP2 gene, which is linked to language and speech. This gene is present in modern humans, and its discovery in Neanderthal DNA strongly indicates that they had some form of spoken communication. But if Neanderthals could talk, how did they sound? Their larger nasal cavities and thick vocal tracts likely made their voices deeper, more resonant, and possibly even more guttural. Some linguists believe Neanderthals spoke in short, direct phrases, focusing on survival and coordination. Unlike Homo sapiens, who developed storytelling and abstract thinking, Neanderthals may have used a language of warriors, fast, efficient, and to the point. While their ability to communicate was clear, their disappearance remains a mystery. Were Neanderthals truly an evolutionary dead end? Or is it possible that Homo sapiens are the real outliers in the human story? For centuries, the story of human evolution has been told as a straight line, one that begins with primitive ancestors and leads directly to modern Homo sapiens. Neanderthals, along with other archaic humans, have often been portrayed as evolutionary dead ends, a branch that simply couldn't keep up. But what if that narrative is wrong? Recent research suggests that Neanderthals were not the outliers. In fact, it may be modern humans who are the true anomaly. Neanderthals thrived for over 350,000 years, far longer than Homo sapiens have existed. They endured ice ages, hunted massive prehistoric beasts, and adapted to some of the harshest climates on Earth. Their bodies were stronger, their bones denser, and their survival instincts unmatched. Modern humans, on the other hand, are physically weaker and uniquely fragile compared to our ancestors. Unlike every other hominin species, Homo sapiens lack prominent brow ridges, have much smaller internal nasal cavities, and feature a significantly shortened face. In evolutionary terms, we are the strange ones. Some scientists now argue that Homo sapiens may have benefited from luck more than superiority. Our ability to form large social groups and share knowledge may have given us an advantage over stronger, more physically resilient species. But if history had taken a slightly different turn, it might have been Neanderthals, not Homo sapiens, who inherited the Earth. But despite their strength and resilience, Neanderthals disappeared. Or did they? What if their legacy lives on, not just in fossils, but in our very own DNA? Neanderthals may have vanished from the Earth, but their legacy is far from gone. Traces of their DNA still exist in modern humans, shaping everything from our immune systems to our physical traits. In a way, they never truly disappeared. They live on within us. But their story raises fascinating questions. Were Homo sapiens truly the superior species, or did we simply get lucky? Could modern genetic science one day unlock the lost strength and endurance of our ancient relatives? And if we could, should we? One thing is certain. Human evolution is not a simple, linear path. It's a complex web of survival, adaptation, and chance. And the deeper we dig into our past, the more we realize how much we still don't know. What do you think? Could Neanderthals have survived in today's world? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this journey through our ancient history, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more. Until next time, stay curious.